Intelligence and Testing Part 3, The Dynamics of Intelligence. And we're on our way. So dynamics, you know, means is it able to change? How much does it change? How much does it stay the same? And uh, these are a couple of uh, studies that were done in Scotland. And what, what the studies show, here's a couple of graphs for you. What this one shows is that women who had higher intelligence tend to live longer and have higher, they're, they're higher, higher speeds. This is in the top 25% up here, and this is in the bottom 25%, the lowest quarter. Tend to die uh, more quickly, tend to live longer, have higher um, IQs as they age. Now, what's really interesting, though, so that's, you know, we can kind of, that kind of makes sense, right? If you're smarter, you might live longer because you might make better choices, you might make better health choices, etc. A lot of different things that can mean to that. However, what's really interesting that you might be interested in, right? This is a scatter plot that shows us correlation. Um, we get our correlation coefficients, remember? And what this one shows here is this, is that your IQ, so this was IQ at age um, 11. They took IQ of children at age 11 and then um, 70 years later or 69 years later, when they were 80 years old, they took their IQ again. And the um, correlation was 0.66, positive 0.66. So that's a pretty darn strong correlation, uh, and the IQs stayed exactly the same. So 0.66 of the IQs were this, uh, not 66%, not but there's a 0.66 correlation, which means the strength of the, how closely they stayed the same after 70 years. That's pretty darn impressive, right? So your IQ, what does that study showed is that you know, your IQ is pretty darn stable. You've got it, and it doesn't really change that much throughout life. Uh, also shows that if you uh, can keep your IQ strong, you're going to live longer. So a couple of things there with your stability of the scores that we just talked about in the last um, part. Now, um, next thing I want to talk about is extreme scores. We can talk about the high scores. We'll talk about those in a moment. And But the high scores, there's less like hard scientific research for like what constitutes you being a genius. We, we have this word genius, but we don't really have a hard scientific definition of what a genius is. So we have some like things that might describe a genius, and we say that geniuses can be geniuses in different things, but what we do have a little bit more data and research on is uh, the lower levels. So an intellectual disability um, means you have two things. Um, you have a low or the trouble with intellectual functioning, intellectual, yeah, whatever, intellectual, oh my gosh, there you go, Elect intellectual, there we go, functioning, good job spelling, spelling champ, functioning, and low adaptive behavior. So um, intellectual function, functioning is fancy word for IQ. I should probably just wrote IQ so I don't have to uh, spell, right? So it basically means low IQ, low being able to solve problems and stuff like that. Adaptive ability might be more of social, practical skills. This is stuff like thinking on your feet, adjusting to social situations. If you walk into a room and everybody's sad and you're feeling happy, you know, you don't continue to act like a, a make a whole bunch of jokes. If everybody in the room's sad, you get a feeling for the room, you realize it's sad, and then you adjust your uh, output appropriately, right? And so people with intellectual disabilities oftentimes have trouble with stuff like that. So any adaptive behavior uh, in social or practical situations. So these two things have to be down. Uh, and this always occurs before um, age 18. That's another thing you should know. It occurs before age 18 or you're classified with an intellectual disability before age 18. Um, Down syndrome is a specific intellectual disability, and you've probably heard about this, the 21st chromosome um, has an extra set. An extra set. So right, normal um, humans have 23 pairs of chromosomes. Um, children with Down syndrome have an extra set of the 21st. They have like a duplicate copy of the 21st, right? Um, some stats about Down syndrome, there's um, roughly one in about 700, I think it's 691 
uh, children are born with Down syndrome. There's about 400,000 people with Down syndrome in the U.S. today. And um, yeah, so it's a pretty, it's, a, it's probably one of the more common intellectual disabilities. And um, those things I just mentioned, ad a low adaptive behavior and low intellectual functioning are both uh, hallmarks of Down syndrome. Then we have some degrees of intellectual disability. Um, so this is, you know, people who fall below. And so remember we just talked about the IQ scores and the standard deviation. So right, so, you know, we have our thing, our normal curve here. That's, so oh, I guess that's all right. Right, right down the middle, we have 100, right? So an IQ, the average is 100, right? The mean, the median, and the mode are all right in 100. Here's our normal curve. Remember, 68% fall within one normal curve and 96% fall within two, or 95% fall within two normal normal or standard deviations. All right, so this is 68% right here. Um, so that means, uh, and the standard deviation for IQ is equal to 15. So this point right here is 115, and this point is 85. And then two standard deviations, right? would be 70 and 130. Well, that's the key right here. Because 96 per, 95 percent of the population, right, is within these two. And so if you're below the 95, which is about two and a half percent, is over here, right? This is a two and a half percent range right there. That's intellectually um, disabled because right statistically you're one of the only two and a half percent that fall below this. All right, so it's, it's basically a statistical, uh, how we come up with this statistically. And so the scores kind of go like this. Um, between 50, as IQ score, between 50 and 70 is mild. You're going to learn to do stuff maybe up to about the sixth grade. Right, so you're going to get up to about sixth grade uh, stuff. With assistance, you might be able to, be able to work. Um, right, a sixth grader, like imagine a, a pretty well-off sixth grader. They could work, right, if there was somebody there telling them what to do and teaching them how to do it. Um, and so uh, 35 to 50 would be moderate. Um, they get to about second grade. And they can work at like sheltered shops where they're doing like simple tasks where somebody's watching them and they can make money for themselves and their family and live a, you know, a lot of a productive life that way. Between 20 and 35 is severe. And severe, they, they learn to talk and perform simple tasks. Um, and they can work under really close supervision. So if there's somebody there helping them, like, like a one-on-one -on -one type thing, then they'll be able to work. They, it's not like they're going to be able to leave them alone for a couple hours and they'll be able to do anything. Um, they need some closer supervision. And then uh, profound is below 20. That would be profound. Um, mental intellectual disability and you need constant aim supervision at all times you can't ever leave uh, something that's profound uh, intellectual disability alone so um, how much of this stuff is uh, genetic and how much is environmentally influenced well heritability right this word think of it as like inheritability inherit remember so inherit is when somebody passes or gives you something so or if you inherit a uh, million dollars from your grandpa who just passed away right he's giving you that um, ability means you have the potential to do something right you have the potential to do something so inherit you're giving the potential to do something right? i have the ability to do really well in my math class right you have the potential to do really well so inheritability you're given Right, this is given the potential to do something. So I say, how is it inheritable? Right, is a trait inheritable? Is something that's inside of you inheritable? It means gonna be passed down and given to me, so I have the potential to do it. Um, so how close? How much does inheritability have to do? So with in, what happened? Oh gosh, I don't know what happened, but we'll go with it. Hey, we're just going with this. Calm down, everybody. Here we go. Um, so we look at twins and we look at brothers and sisters and stuff like that. We look at the environment. So the environment is the outside. 
What's interesting to know is that, look at this, so this is um, this is the correlation coefficient, right? So a perfect, remember a perfect correlation would be 1, 1.0 or negative 1.0. That would be a positive correlation, that would be a negative. So this would be inverse relationship, positive relationship. Um, so perfect correlation means exactly, so genetics, so even with I, oh my gosh, why does it keep doing that? Hold on, I'm gonna pause this and try to figure this out. Hey, so let's go with this. It's a little bit messed up, but at least we can see everything, right? So we're talking about environmental influences, other stuff outside um, the environment. How much does that influence your intelligence? Well, if we look here, and identical twins reared together. So this means these are like the, the gold standard right, when we measure this stuff. We talked about these people before. They have the exact same genetics. So their heritability is exactly the same, right? They're reared together, so their environment should be just about exactly the same. Now, you may have be treated slightly differently as an identical twin, and you, things might be slightly different, but you're pretty much, if you're living together, your, your environment's going to be pretty spot on the same. And look what their um, correlation is. It's still not all the way. So we're looking at, you know, less than, less than a point nine, which is a super strong correlation, but it still shows you, what's more important is it shows you that all this right here, there's still, the environment still influences these people. So we, should, we know from identical twins that it's heritability plus environmental influences that um, influence your intelligence. Um, the estimate, right, we don't have exactly how much, but the estimate's about 50% of your intelligence is inherited. So that means about 50%. We, 50% we can account for from your parents. That doesn't mean that exactly 50% of your parents' intelligence is going to be given to you. So if your parents, you know, if your mom has an IQ score of 120 and your dad has an IQ score of, a, of 100, that doesn't mean you take half of 100 and half of 120, add them together for 110, that's what your IQ score is going to be. That's not how it works. It's just that we can account for whatever your IQ score is, we can say, oh, your parents probably attributed about 50% of that to you, okay? So it's not as cut and dry as like, let's just cut everybody in half, add them together, and this is what your kid's going to be, all right? More intelligent parents are more likely to have more intelligent children, uh, probably because of a combination of things, right? From inherited, in addition to more intelligent parents are probably going to provide more uh, stimulating so environmental environments for their children, right? They might give them more opportunities to succeed, whereas parents who are less intelligent might not have the resources or the know-how to provide those things, right? So they, everything kind of works together. Um, with this. All right, last thing I want to see here is group differences, right? This is a fun one here, group differences. So this is, let's look at these things as between boys and girls. Um, spelling, guess who's better, right? Females are better on spelling by a lot, right? Um, as a high school, only 30% of boys can spell better than girls on national tests, uh, international tests at that. Verbal ability, uh, females again, they win. Mental and math, uh, spatial abilities. So math and spatial, we tend to think of uh, math as a, as a boy thing, but it's, it's really not. These are almost exactly the same. Right, hundred studies has been done internationally, and the, the results have been exactly the same. Spatial ability. So when we talk about spatial ability, we talk about stuff like chess. Why are ninety nine percent of the grandmasters of chess right? Which is the, when we think of chess, we think of a highly cognitive, highly intelligent game that people play. Um, why are 99% of chess masters uh, men? And um, the reason is, is because most chess masters got started really young and boys get started playing chess really young. So we got to look at a more important question or a more difficult question to answer is not why are the men um, more likely to get a physics degree or more likely to become chess masters. It's why are boys being, you know, starting these things earlier? You know, how is... The environment influencing these things and so here's a quick graph or a picture to kind of illustrate this difference between environment and heritability so the seeds here are exactly the same these seeds are exactly the same so I had some seeds and I tab two different types of soil right so the soil is the environment the seeds are the same so imagine you take if I have two kids and, and they're separated at birth all right my seeds are gonna be the same they're gonna pretty much be the same um, or two twins, there we go, two twins separated at birth. They're going to have the same 
uh, level of inheritance as far as genetics and whatnot go, right? If I take one twin and put it with a really smart family and one of the twins and put it with a less intelligent family, right, the environments are going to be very different, right? And so as you can see here, that this flower is taller than that flower. That's a difference of genetics right here, right? These, these differences of genetics. So when you compare within the group, that's genetics. When I compare between these groups right here, right, I'm comparing the environment. So if you think about um, like children that are born in inner cities where, you know, really cramps together without a much opportunity to access to education and somebody's born in a more affluent community where, you know, they're going to uh, have a $10,000 a semester preschool, right, this um, environment is going to be a bit different, right? And so these things might change based on the environment, not, not necessarily based on the genetics. And so it's always a combination of those two things that uh, equal it. So environment doesn't necessarily cause it, right? There's plenty of rich kids who go to really nice schools who don't end up doing that great. And there's also plenty of uh, poor kids who don't get to go to nice preschools who end up being very, very smart. And so it's not one or the other, right? It's always a combination we're talking about psychology. All right, so thank you for that, and we'll see you again shortly.